Great pleasure to be here. I'm thoroughly enjoying the evening. It's amazing to hear everyone's gifts and skills. Um, thank you for inviting me. Um, it's also super cool. You know, the pandemic is tough, but we wouldn't be able to do something like this. So this is really cool. Uh, link up with people from all over. And uh, even though we can't talk face to face, still get to spend time with one another and enjoy one another's gifts. So it's very cool. Thanks for the invitation. Uh, yeah, um, when I first read Orlando's work, I read Bone Light and it just blew up my skull. <laughs> and then I read Letters and then it blew my skull more, more apart. So this is a super cool opportunity to just join you guys. Um, I consider myself to be an explorer. Um, I'll just have many ideas and just want to try an idea and I'll think what will happen if I try this or what what will happen if I combine this with that. So more than anything else, I just consider myself an explorer. And it would be like if I had a journal and I was documenting a land that I had yet to visit, I might see a mountain off in the distance and I might travel a little bit closer to it and make notes and uh, leave a note for hopefully a future traveler, you know, go up closer and explore this mountain in further detail. And then I might go down to the river and I might stay at the river for a week and I might explore there. But I, I, the way I work artistically is I tend to have many ideas and kind of just jump and let one thing influence another thing. So being an explorer, I'm just gonna show you guys some of these explorations. I began, um, I actually had a visual arts background influenced by my dad and my grandma on my mom's side. So I was surrounded by art since I was just a little kid. Um, so I started with a visual arts background in college. I started to take creative writing courses and really enjoyed that. And then I just kind of began to create a hybrid, um, use my visual arts and combine it with writing. And then that led me into visual poetry. So I'm gonna start um, with some videos. Can everybody see my screen okay? Okay. Okay, these were made um, when we first went into the shelter at home policy. Okay, our violent revolution. Coronavirus as carnivorous. Okay, so those were anagram poems that, that were created when we first needed to go into shelter at home. Um, I'll kind of go in order of these explorations. Um, this first one is called The Digital Breakdown of the Poet, Diagram 1A. This is the front view, so it's supposed to look like a robotic face, kind of like C-3PO influenced. Um, you've got the mechanical verb transfer. You've got the plug-in activation analog. Um, you have a metaphorically enhanced eardrum. You have synthetic encoding, so run the wire down to the heart. And then you can see towards the bottom, the voice box. So that's the digital voice or digital breakdown of the poet diagram 1A. Here's diagram 1B. This is the side view. You have the audio antenna, which the poet needs, um, the metabolic wave structure, the eye socket, vision, aka optical prowess, um, the linguistical oxygenated apparatus, aka the voice box, 
And then down near the bottom, you've got the right ear and left ear audio levels, right eye and left eye visual levels. This is diagram 1C, the full body view of the poet. The poet's mind is the code breaker. You've got the heart, some ribs are labeled, mechanized poetics, verbal wiring, intertwined hexagonal patterning, twir of the arm, incisionary procedure tactics. The poet's hand is the code maker. So using your hand, writing the poem, creating the code, using your mind to break the code. Um, and then these were influenced again by my visual arts background. These are the paintings. Some of these are from the painting series. Um, ironically though, no paint whatsoever, just done with ink. So this one says, it is lovely, yes, and everything always is art. This one, Kandinsky Energy, Coltrane Rhythm. This poem is for the minimalists, though it has already said too much. The soul laid down on canvas only to be boxed up and shipped out. Pollock and Rothko clinking lemonade glasses before the war. Artists up and coming, coming up empty, but holding out a hand for something or another. Blast of oil drip, welding together new ways to feel and think. Um, this is a visual work called From Ink. I chose this one because this is kind of the idea behind a lot of my work. I was looking around and seeing so much excellent poetry and such excellent fiction and short stories that I thought, I can't be a writer. Uh, these guys are way too good. I'm gonna be an unwriter or I'm gonna be, um, I'm gonna explore what does it look like when a thought is in process, but it's not fully formed. So this guy from Inc. Um, all the poetry that I'm doing, if I'm traditional, and if, especially if you want to look at like kind of the romanticized idea, dipping an ink pen in an inkwell and writing. So all the poetry comes from ink. So here you have, this was actually an article about a Russian composer. So I took a picture of him. He's rising up out of the ink bottle, and then he's tossing up letters into the air along with ink. And within those letters is the potential to write anything and everything, but it has yet to be formed. He is just um, giving you the opportunity. This is Book of Spells. Um, the next things I'm gonna share are the Concrete Poetry series. So this is the statement for those. It says, on concrete. The concrete photographs are a series of site-specific artworks that exist now only as images. I call them poems. Some may look at them and ask, where's the poem? And I would respond, the poem was the sound the birds made as I laid down each letter. The poem was the feel of the wind against my skin as I worked outdoors. The poem was the construction workers, the police officer, looking into whether or not I was vandalizing. The poem was the clouds moving overhead, the time slipping away, the shadows moving in as the afternoon became evening. One of the definitions for concrete from the N. Carter World English Dictionary is solid and real, able to be seen or touched because it exists in reality, not just as an idea. I was the only one who was able to touch these poems in reality, to feel the heat of the concrete as I composed. The poems and memories that resulted remain solid in my mind. Okay, so these came from the idea of concrete poetry. The movement began in the 50s and 60s, very strongly over in Brazil. Uh, I found these letters at Hobby Lobby, I believe, and Michael's, and they were already gray. And so I got this idea, I'll take, I'll make literal concrete poetry. I'll take these letters I'll find site-specific places and lay them down 
and create concrete poems. I think these were over five or six years ago, but I remember like this one was near a Walmart where they took out their trash. I just used their uh, rain drench to, to lay down that poem. This one's called Towards the Light. Also at that same Walmart, they were doing construction and they had these big tubes that were eventually gonna go in the ground. Before that happened though, I laid this one down and took this photograph. Okay, that's the concrete series. Um, I'm gonna share some musical ones next. Um, I really like working with music, the idea that poetry is lyrical. Um, we saw, we've already seen examples of that, and especially I think with Uche's work, just the lyrical and rhythmic um, words that he, that he shared. Um, this one's called Begin With T. So the composer is starting with the letter T and going from there and then letting the music slash poem flow down from there. Some of these are quite recent. They're from a series called Sound Off and they were created during the global pandemic. The idea is that when you want to sound off about something, you usually do it kind of loudly, but now because we are isolated, it's almost like your sound has been turned off. So it's an ironic meaning of sound off. This one's called The Maestro. Uh, a little bit about how I work. I kind of look at everything as material to be used for art. So I think of that commercial, if some of you remember it, uh, whatever it is I think I see becomes a Tootsie Roll to me. I always am looking out at the world as how can I use this? And so this was a advertisement for a wedding ring. It might've been like a Zales advertisement. So the gentleman's hand is on the right side and he was actually about to slip on the ring on the women's on the woman's finger on the left. And so I split their hands apart and created it like it's the, the maestro, the composer, again, forming the poem, but it's not quite formed. And this one's called Soundless. So I like the idea of working with music, but when you're looking at it on the page, especially if you came to it just by yourself, um, you see musical annotations, but you don't hear any sound. So thus the poem becomes soundless. These are the plus and minus works, um, all taken from a dictionary. So the only rule I set was that I'm gonna add and subtract uh, whatever images I find from this dictionary I'm gonna use. So I found like this Bunsen burner, Subtract the heart equals war. This cell plus this topographical map, which they kind of look similar, equals a dream cell. Ear or sound minus text equals illegible noise. This drill into the brain plus this clamp on the eye equals noose of ideas. Gas mask minus time equals life slipping away. 
Um, these are the mark series. It's kind of words doing what they say. So you've got the exclamation mark and the question mark forming the R for marks. This word's growing. Jump. Flip. Moved. Overlap. Parallel. Plural. Removed. Shrink. Split. Um, along similar lines, this is from the series called Twords. Um, jamming two words together to form one word, assassin seer. And poetomology. This is from the Dimension series. Um, I printed out text, folded it into various shapes, and then took photographs of it, then ran those photographs on a copy machine. This one was supposed to be like a poetical cityscape. Similar idea, this one's called drafting of poetics. I used those pictures and then I also found these hands from a drafting book and added those to the three-dimensional pictures. These are from the architecture series. Um, a lot of my work, again, has to do with a, coming from a visual arts background. So in visual art, you learn how to make things look three-dimensional on a two-dimensional surface. So you wanna make it look like it pops off the page, even though it's on a flat surface. So um, these were with that idea in mind. And also this idea that kind of poetry was starting to get bored. It was starting to get bored just sitting on the page, being lined up and uh, just kind of being tame. So I wanted to explode it. And so these are that idea, like explode the poem. Um, they were created, I work a lot in Microsoft Publisher. The first thing I did was to create kind of this maze of words that ran left and right and up and down. So horizontal and vertical. So you have the word death and then using the D, demonstrate, and then using the E, east. So, so on and so forth, it kept going like that. Either words run right and left or up and down, like flower, revolver. And then I'll see if I can zoom in to one of these. This one, you've got the word never right in the middle. And then you shoot out from there into all these others. This is from the comic series. I loved comic books when I was a kid. So then a few years ago, I got the idea to go to a comic store and just look for the inexpensive comics. I think like the quarter comics in the box, finding superheroes that I found interesting and then combining them with text. So this one is harnessing the power of language. This one is surfing the sound waves. The hero emerges. I'll go kind of quick on some of these. This is the Blueprint series. Again, working with that idea of trying to create three-dimensional poetry. So this one's called Fracture Finding 
which is up here. And then this crack begins to form, this fracture flows through the poem, fracture finding a way through the maze. Light shines through. This is called doorway. I like that idea of when you read, um, you're often transported into a different world. So this is the idea that um, you open up this frame here, you go through this door and you're transported into this different world. This one's called um, finishing touches. You have this guy down here just measuring, making sure everything is straight and the poem is ready to go. Um, here I was working with the idea of trying to make the poem almost like liquid, flowing, cascading down like a waterfall. This one reads, the storm rolled in from the east, or from the west, excuse me, lightning shot through the sky, washing my DNA off the page. These are the rectangle series, again, heavily influenced by comic books from when I was a kid. Um, she's saying, go ahead, roll the dice and define a world. That over there looks barely like an arm spilling out memory. Spurn the results. These two guys talking to one another, a handful of gurgling entangled in espionage. Um, flowing from black and white comic to a uh, color comic. This is called Chemical. I combine National Geographic from like the 1930s and 1940s with a medical dictionary and created this comic book called Chemical. I'll go quickly through it. But I basically looked for the most interesting images I could find in National Geographic. It would be considered more of a surreal comic book. If you try to read it with a linear storyline in mind, it won't make any sense whatsoever. Um, you've got this guy here pointing to his watch. Time is of the essence, but what is the essence of time? I like this here. This guy ended up looking like a giant because these were taken from two different articles. They fight, punch, crash. And then this guy ends up come, becoming the winner. He wasn't even in the original fight, <laughs> but that, that's all right. Uh, I made Eel Man, took an ad about a business guy and replaced his head with an eel. And then he's speaking Arabic. I took this boy's hat and put it on this guy's head. You've got this ape in deep thought. Then I remember comic books having advertisements. So you've got save 10 cents on Cocoa Puffs, get a rare stamp for free, various cool things that you can order. Then this is the chief rings up the team on the five-way hotline. So I just found um, from five different articles people on phones and decided that they're all around the world, the superhero team and the chief is ringing them up to get them all together. Again, this guy was doing something else and I replaced it with a car to make him look like he's a giant with superhuman strength just lifting up that car. This guy is saying force complicates history. History has forced complications. These two guys are the Duck Brothers. Then this is the last page. This mysterious man from the sky comes down and you've got this guy down here very excited. He says to be continued. Hey kids, don't miss the exciting second issue. Can the team stop the missile in time? Will the Duck Brothers be able to infiltrate the secret underground laboratory? Who is the mysterious man from the sky? 
plus look for a giant size pullout poster of eel man i never have made chemical part two but maybe one of these days i'll make that second one um, these are from music of the spheres so it starts with the space shuttle taking off into space landing on the moon looking out at the earth um, so what I did with these was I spray painted using stencils, and then I manipulated those stencils. I altered the colors, and I turned them into spheres. And then I went to NASA. They have a daily photograph, and I replaced their planets and stars and things that I saw with my own spheres of um, spray painted colors. This one's called Solar Flare, and this one's Genesis. Uh, I believe there are two from the spheres. These were early on as well, again, trying to create three-dimensional. I made a sphere out of paper, laid it down on the copy machine, kind of smushed it, and then took a copy. And all the words are all synonyms for the word sphere. I'm gonna go fast through these. They're from the Framework series. This is its sister called Squares. Uh, this is white on white. Now those letters I used for the concrete poems, I took them again, laid them down on a book cover, and then once I had them how I liked them, I spray painted them all white. And this is white on white too. Uh, this is called Abstract Thought and Balancing Act. And the idea behind this one especially, it was supposed to mimic the spinal cord and kind of the, the way his spinal cord is flowing. And also this idea of this delicate balance when we speak to one another. This is from black on white on black. Uh, these are from a typewriter series. This one's dedicated to Carl Kempton, who was on last time. I consider him a mentor. Uh, both his own work and the work that he's pointed to have been heavily influential and inspiring. Uh, this was created using three stencils. I ran it through a typewriter once, then I laid down a second stencil, ran it through the typewriter a second time to get darker grays, ran it through a third time with a third stencil to get almost blacks. Uh, one of the collages that I do. And then again, this is from a series called Abstracts. It was the idea that the, the letter is tired of conforming and just having to do what, what English says it should do. Line up next to this letter or next to that letter and form a word. Instead, I came up with this idea that the letters like whispered to me, uh, we don't, we're tired of conforming. We just want to be recognized for our beauty, our silhouettes. So I began just pasting down letters and then chopping up those letters and recombining them to just create these abstract works. And then this is something very recent. Um, I found this book on art at school and manipulated the text on a copy machine. So the idea is kind of um, you want your poetry or you want your text to flow. So I'm trying to make the text like literally flow. This is called Foreign Song. Um, the thought behind this was what would it look like to hear or to visualize a foreign language? So it might have some sounds and things that are recognizable, but I can't quite make it out. This is from the X series, um, laying text over text, putting it through a typewriter, burning it and putting dictionary text behind wherever it got burned.
letters, patterns, structures. Again, this was just taking the letters and uh, letting them create their own, uh, letting them just have their own beauty for beauty's sake. So everything within these uh, is just simply letters, not supposed to say anything whatsoever. And then using a lot of repetition to create these different structures. This one was kind of a maze created by letter L's. Um, these are the colors of poetry series. Just looking through magazines, looking for vivid, bright ads, ripping those ads um, into different pieces and then recombining them. So I like this idea of taking the advertisement and kind of flipping it on its head. I don't want to actually buy the product, but I appreciate the beautiful colors and things that they provided in the magazine. So I'm gonna rip it up and I'm gonna create something else with it. Uh, these are from a series called Stuck, using stickers that I found at uh, Walmart, Hobby Lobby and Michaels. And the double meaning, the stickers are stuck down on the page, and then also that language is stuck, or language has been stuck. Let's see, I'm going to go fast through these. And then this last one is just an x-ray of the poet's mind. Okay, last thing, I'm going to read a, briefly from something called Re-Echoes, and it's just sound upon sound, ricocheting and clashing off one another. Vocational rascal luck chassis juxtaposed yelping years ago, pace setter turned paper u tunes, other half defrosted button holding brouhaha, kind of brownish gray brainwashed jamboree, silhouette of civil jubilees like clockwork. Lie dormant, transmutation, treachery, aspirants, jog your memory, J. June, shift ground, shift, fee, steep, sheep farm, sterilized sticker album, short version. Check out can do, chew on cockamamie, get entangled, chilly shelling. Hedge your bets, shadow sopping wet from my signal. High speed, whatever happens will be the fabric of building. Isolating tag along alone. Daily life vanguard, tenure fuzz, gadabouts first time. Drag a man, laugh your head off, knock your socks off. Robotically rock solid, adorably. Agreeableness, get your bearings, gibberish, Irish rebar. Antarctic to my amazement, lay bare waste it, so it is said. That is to say, mind thing, snack, food, sooth, catnapping, cogency, playing ulcer truthfully two times. Oodles of ground, sound warfare. Lexical hectic shenanigans. Station traction in dish plus three eighths fraction. Angled fangs, trogans, litters, dandily, andy pounds. Lamps, 166 note, might ranch on net like fez, bibulously, tenuous, seriously, arm, elation, obese, earlobes, dumbo, gestation, festoon, cartoon, network, correction, ray, poetical, silical, epical, lance, online, slippers, lisp, asperse, simper, atom, thump, thou, autopsy, scales, doesn't bode well, pip, same, zima, tibia, jig, kit, combat, and melanin, sun, soups on, blue, oregano, ferny, rain, filming, swan, palms, idle, spa, grad, sequel, captain, hog, retina, isobar, boxers, brack, dactyl, brass, symphony, symbol, crest, stylite, bog, gobber, stoppers, astir, sir, the pot is boggled. Ledge of Ganja, Huffier Fry, Hyrax Vamp, Born to Bike, Shout It Out, Durham Fossil, Macro, Alport, Braycolp, Acorn, Lace, Cyril, Lucra, Copra, Leprous, Cosmic Chortle, Must Through the Iron Fort, Vapor Munch, Quartz, Ads, Jab, Encore, Calvary, M, Virtue, Jilt, Visa, Never Leave Home Without It, Virtual Jars Filled with Trivia. Olivia Newton John, I believe, once said, Cockroaches of Whore, Angel Like Beauty. Be free on the Rudy, a wop bop a loop bop a wop bam boom from Little Richard. Room for charitable clarity. Little rascals, black breaching, unbeatable knickers. Shish kebab, analog barbaric aberrancy, kicking chaos back from sabbatical. Barely noticeable archaeological charitable shock absorbing chronological school teachers. Renationalized predestination, depersonalizing gravitational generalization presently installed in intolerant grandiose stepping stones. Slide your bones into tomorrow through yesterday. 
White dominated someone out of their time resolution shows North Southwest radio geonometric underestimated 3,300 weights. Horse enormity of speechless dreams. I imagine an us, a man guised as the sun. I wonder how much gum is in the sea. Get gas at many, many marts in the USA. For loose gums, try polydent usage. Plotting hide in golden oldie. We all gain age. Iguanas at WrestleMania. A genius scam. Amnesia manages to remain an enigma. Magnesia seeming amuses Gemini. Here's a nifty gem. Pale apes plead a leap to ale. Pin pal, Lee peels lap pee. When I was a kid, I'd scoop my peas into a napkin, then throw them away. Hetera defrayed, dreary hater decayed, dreary cube deep ambushes madly nerdy. A back befitting vases made of balsa wood kept flipping plash splashy recon slog in a transfer from tree trunks. Funky fresh, mighty morphine power rangers. Furnished ligna machine signing lung checks within the margin. Mag magical shin powders. Banyan abandoned, ban on the run, on bagneo, anabas, ambo nab, anabolic, antibody, albinos, bamboo, anabinia, banana, anoint, noon, peon, a neuron, nob, nova, boa, biota, nebula, boyar. I am Envy Jam, Eve Nay, Bebopper, Bon Bons, Annex, Knob, Annul, Skull, Nabob, Ozone, Bubos, Bank Book, Novo, Bobcat, Nana, Bozo, Alone, Alone, Roan again. Willie Nelsie's on the road again. See also Jack Kerouac. And I'll stop with that.